Hello folks, this is Pastor Brandon coming to you live from Northwest Arkansas on a very beautiful and sunny uh, morning. Uh, this is Pastor Brandon live coming and it's good to be here this morning. I am actually currently uh, staying with a good friend of mine. I am going to be taking his, uh, his boys to church uh, tomorrow morning and... Uh, Tell you what, these two boys, I, 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 the two boy, these two boys that I take to church, I am, and I'm kind of like their elder in, in, in a way, and they've been just such a blessing to just watch them grow. So it's, it's, they, they love the Lord. They want to, they want to serve Him, and it's just amazing to see how children grow in the ways of the Lord. Amen. And that's important. We should be able to train our kids up in the ways of the Lord. Especially in these dark times and the way our society is going, which <coughs> is actually going to be, it's very interesting that, uh, it's very interesting because what I'm going to be speaking on today is actually a very serious issue. And so it's going to be, I'm going to be exposing a particular Hollywood film. And I'm gonna give it as it is, okay. And it's not it's it's gonna be very graphic. And so I'm gonna try to be as mindful as I can to those who are watching and tuning in to this morning. Uh, but I'm going to tell it as it is and tell the truth. But um, I'm also gonna try to be uh, do what I can to be mindful. Well, anyways, it's good to be here with you this morning. Um, got a good, I got a pastor friend of mine from Missouri. Um, actually I got a lot of pastor friends in Missouri, a couple of them anyways. Uh, but one of them, uh, I spoke to, uh, I speak to him on Facebook and he's got a homecoming coming up. His name is Pastor Ron and he pastors a church of many blessings and uh, that, let's see here, uh, Church of Many, uh, he pastors a church, uh, you know, Church of Many Blessings in Fredericktown, Missouri, and uh, and on and on August third, fourth, and fifth is going to be their their homecoming. And so, with that said, uh, if there's anyone in that area that can go, I'd like to encourage you to go. Uh, Pastor Ron and his family would like to welcome you to their church for their homecoming. And um, for those of you that can drive there, I'd like to encourage you to drive, you know, go and go there if you can. And um, they would like to see as many people there. So, you know, because they want to be able to show the love of Christ by preaching the gospel, by good preaching. Amen. And so with that said, I'm going to give you some details on that. Um, <coughs> uh, they're going to be having services on Friday night at 7 o'clock p.m. They're going to have Saturday night at uh, services, a service on Saturday night at 7 p.m. As well as services on Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. and Sunday afternoon at 2, uh, 2 o'clock p.m. Uh, dinner is going to be on the church in between Sunday services. Uh, they're going to have singers, uh, one from Ellsmore from West Plain, Missouri, the uh, Harvells from Gotham, Alabama, and the 11th Hour from Nashville, Tennessee. And for those of you that would like the address to the church, it's going to be 217 East College Street, Fredericktown, Missouri. Uh I'll repeat that again. It is uh, 217 East College Street, Fredericktown, Missouri. And so, <clears throat> with that said, <coughs> um, Pastor Ron and his family would like for you to join them on their, uh, would like for them to have you join them on their uh, homecoming on, on August 3rd, 4th, and 5th. So if you can make it, great. But if you can't make it, I'm sure they'll be streaming their services live. 
And so we'd like to encourage, I'd like to encourage you to, uh, if you can, uh, please go and on Facebook and just watch your services live if you can. And I'm sure that he would greatly, greatly appreciate that. <clears throat> and, um, he is a soul winner. He wants to have people saved. He wants to have the gospel being preached. Uh, not just to group, not just to a certain group of people, but to all people. Amen. So <coughs> that's a little bit of that. Um, I am not being paid to to say that. I wanted to help him out with uh, his homecoming. I I myself probably uh, I'm not going to be able to make it. But I had asked Pastor Ron if I can be able to do something, if I could be able to share this with you, and he insisted that I would. Well, he actually sounded uh, very insistent that I I should, and that it'd be great. It would be great if I did that for him. So, um, brother, uh, if you're watching this, I uh, appreciate you. I love you, brother. You keep preaching the word. I'll be praying for you. Be praying for your church. Be praying. I'll be praying for. Uh, your homecoming, praying that souls will be saved and that the Spirit of God will be moving, and hopefully, you know, who knows, you might have a revival in that in that area of yours, uh, Frederick Town. So, uh, anyways, with that said, thank you for uh, thank you for tuning in with us today. We appreciate you. We love you, and uh, we're going to be talking about something that's going to be kind of a again, it's going to be kind of a very uh, interesting topic. <clears throat> Oh, uh, well, not interesting, but it's going to be a very graphic topic. Uh, I'm going to be uh, revisiting uh, a particular uh, sermon that I preached a while back, exposing a particular Hollywood movie. And this particular movie uh, endorses sin, endorses adultery, fornication, and all sorts of other things that... God says, you're not supposed to do, the film promotes. And it's movies like this from Hollywood that corrupt our society here in America. Okay? And the reason, and, and here's the reason why I'm going to be teaching on this. Because in the Fishers of Men broadcast, I'm currently going through a series right now called The Shekinah Glory Exposed. And so we're talking about Shekinah, we're talking about Astroth, we're talking about Jezebel. And Jezebel has a lot to do with this particular film. Because I'll tell you right now, the spirit behind this particular film I'm going to be preaching on, the spirit behind it is Jezebel. And uh, so we're going to be doing some, ex we're going to expose this. And I'm going to tell it. I'm going to tell the whole thing. Everything I got written down, I'm going to actually expose. So, with that said, if you got kids at this time, if you got children that you may not, that you know, if you're really particular and kind of funny about wanting to have your kids listen in on, on uh, you know, your youngins um, listening on to something that's really graphic. Um, at this time, it would be good if you could have them uh, go to another part of the house uh, and, you know, just have them stay out there for a little bit uh, because this sermon is going to be really graphic. And this sermon is, uh, <clears throat> this particular sermon, um, you know, I'll do what I can to, keep it uh you know i'll try to keep it you know I tr i'll try to you know be mindful about this stuff but i have to preach it as it is amen so i'm just gonna give you a warning this particular sermon is quite graphic and there's a lot of connotations in in, in this uh and i i just don't i just want to be mindful of the youngins and i just want to make sure that if you have if you have youngins that are around and if you're watching this if you can send them off for just a little bit uh you know and once i'm done then you can bring them back in and, and stuff but uh but if for those of you that are adults uh it'd be you know 
uh, what I'm going to speak to you today on is something very, it's very serious. And the stuff that this film promotes is very much what God is very much against. His word says don't do it and yet people are doing it. Okay? <clears throat> With that said, um, the, film, the, the film I'm going to be exposing today is called Fifty Shades of Grey. The title of this message is Fifty Shades of Grey Exposed. And um, I have to, if, if I see a film like this, I have to, if I, oh, not film, I'm sorry. If I see something like this that, uh, a film is 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 the way it is. Um, if I see that there's a particular film that is promoting sin, I have an obligation to expose it. Okay. And if I don't expose it, God's gonna hold me responsible for it. Because if I don't expose it, I am just as guilty as. Those who cut who those who are actually for it. So I'm going to expose it, and it's not going to be a pretty one. Okay, it's not. This is not. This is not going to be a very rosy message. But I'm going to preach it as it is. And if people have a problem with that, take it up with God. Okay, take it up with God and tell God you don't like it. I am just a messenger. Now, <coughs> first thing you want to make note is that this movie, Fifty Shades of Grey, came out on Friday the 13th. There is a significance to that, and we're going to be getting to that. We're going to be getting into that in a little bit, okay? But this movie came out on Friday the 13th, and I'm going to read you word for word what this movie is about. This is something I got off on the International Movie Database. I'm going to read to you what this movie is about. <clears throat> now, when Anesthesia Steele, a literature student, goes to an interview with interview the wealthy Christian Gray, that's an interesting name, and it's kind of a, and I say interesting, I don't mean that in a good way. I just think that's really weird. They'd have a character named Christian Gray. Anyways, uh, as a favor to her roommate, Kate uh, Kavanaugh, whatever, I can't pronounce the last name, I apologize, but basically her roommate, Kate, she encounters a beautiful, brilliant, intimidating man. The innocent and naive Anna starts to realize she wants him, despise the Ignamic reserve and advice she finds herself desperate to get close to him. Not able to resist Anna's beauty and independent spirit, Christian Grey admits he wants her too, but in his own terms. Stop right there. When you've got women, well actually, if you got women that are beautiful, and, 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 and here's the thing, a man should protect a woman's beauty. Not violate it. Amen? But when you have a man that wants his way with a woman on his own terms, to me, they're just dirty pigs. Men can be dirty, rotten pigs. Okay? First of all, a man should protect a woman's beauty. Not violate it. You know how a man violates a woman's beauty? Let's put it this way. When you start to sexually abuse a woman, you just violated her beauty. And I told you, it's going to get a little graphic. Okay? But I'm going to get very real with you. Okay? Now... To me, that whole character, Christian Grey, is just a pig. He's a rotten pig, is what he is. He's got no business doing and saying something to a woman that violates God's word. 
And stuff like this makes me angry. Continue on. Anna hesitates as she discovers she is as she discovers this this singular taste of Christian Grey, despite of the embellishments of his success, his multinational business, his vast wealth, his loving family, Grey is consumed by the need to control everything. Now I'm gonna tell you something. Now having to now after having said that, you from that from what I just read. You could pick up there's a lot of sexual connotations and has nothing and and, and 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 has nothing but fornication and adultery. I'm gonna tell you something. The Bible says it's wrong to commit such things. Can I get an amen from God's people on that? Fornication and adultery is wrong. It's wrong. <clears throat> um, to prove my point, the movie, to prove the point that the movie uh, uh, promotes adultery and fornication, is because the film has been rated has been rated R. Which, by the way, to what I know about the movie, is basically pornography. Rated R. Should, is not an is not a correct rating. It should be rated something higher than that. But it's been rated R, and according to the International Movie Database, the film contains strong sex. Uh, the film contains strong sex and nudity, along with portrayal of erotic role play and dominion dominion and submission, and sadomasochistic uh, practices. There are also very strong verbal references to such practices and the instruments used. Folks, I don't know about you, but that sounds really twisted, sick, perverted, and really satanic, dark, and wrong. And yet, it, we can't preach the word of God in our schools, but they will allow this trash to be played in Hollywood in our theaters. It makes me angry. That we can't preach the word because they censor the word of God, but they won't censor this trash. They allow this trash everywhere. Folks, where has our society become? What has our society have become? If you got, okay, for those of you that don't know what sadomasochistic is, okay, it's interaction, especially sexual activity, in which one person enjoys inflicting physical or mental suffering on another person for pleasure. Is what it is. I told you this particular message is graphic. It's really graphic. But I'm not going to hold back because it needs to be said and it needs to be exposed. Because our society has been corrupt. Our society has basically, our society has a mental illness called progressivism and liberalism. <clears throat> if you've got your Bibles with you, we're going to open up a big can of King James. Can open up a big old can of King James. Turn with me to Leviticus chapter 19. If you got your Bibles with you, turn with me to Leviticus chapter 19, verses 28 through 29. Okay, Leviticus 19, 28 to 29. Uh, oh. It says, You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. Do not prostitute thy daughter. To cause her to be a whore, lest the land fall to whoredom, and the land become full of wickedness. Let me tell you something. Movies like this is causing our land to be defiled and full of wickedness. Can I get an amen on that? Okay? Don't prostitute your daughter lest she become a whore. And the land be defiled. Okay? Um... 
Turn with me to Exodus 2014. Again, that was Exodus chapter 20, verse 14. It says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. That's part of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not commit adultery, people. Okay? All right, and Deuteronomy, uh, Deuteronomy 5.18, it says, Neither shall thou commit adultery. Okay, turn with me to Proverbs chapter 6, verse 32. Proverbs, Proverbs 6, 20, uh, Proverbs 6, 32. It says, But whosoever committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. You can get wisdom. You know, Proverbs is the book of wisdom. Amen? Amen? If you want wisdom, go to the book of Proverbs. There's a little nugget of wisdom for you. Okay? Uh, in uh, Matthew chapter 5, 27 through 28, it says, You have heard it that it was said, of, said by them of old times, Thou shalt not commit adultery, but I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, he hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Jesus is saying even if you look at a woman to lust after her, you've already committed adultery. Listen. I think a lot of us, I think a lot of men struggle with that in some way, shape, or form, but they need to repent of their sin. Amen? Um... Galatians 5.19, it says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Amen? God is, God is against adultery and fornication. You know why? Because adultery and fornication are sin. Now, for those of you that don't know what fornication is, fornication is people having... Um, Sexual intercourse before marriage. It is exactly what Fifty Shades of Grey promotes. Okay, here's here's more what God says about that, about fornication. First Corinthians in First Corinthians chapter six, eighteen to twenty. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you? Which ye have heard, which ye have of God, and ye are not, are, and ye are not your own, for ye were, for ye are brought with the price. Therefore, glorify God in your body, and in your spirit, which are God's. And fornication, and adultery, and this sadom, and this uh, this sadomasochistic practices are not glorifying to God. They are not. Amen. Think about that. Okay, Hebrews thirteen four it says marriage is it, marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. In First Corinthians chapter six verses nine through eleven, it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous should not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators nor adulterers, idolaters nor adulterers nor effeminate nor abuses of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Let me tell you something. Okay? If a person is fornicating, and they're whoremongers, and they're adulterers, if you die in your sin and you don't repent and you reject the Lord, you will go to hell. And God will judge. God judges those people. Those type of people. Adulterers, fornication, adulterers, whoremongers, adulterers, effeminate. All the things that I've read off. 
we see that God will not stand for that. Okay? Revelation 21 8, it says, But the fearful and unbelieving and abominable mortars and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. James 4 4, it says, Ye, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. In Ezekiel 16.32, But as a wife that committeth adultery, which taketh strangers instead of her, of her husband. Now folks, we see that God is very much against fornication and adultery, and promises they will have a part in the lake of fire. And this is because fornication and adultery are sin. Amen? Now, in Revelation 2, 20-21, it says, Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to, to, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her a space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. You know, it's interesting that the, the director of this film happens to be a woman. Okay? The woman that directed this goes by the name of Sam Taylor Johnson. And she is a Jezebel. In other words, she has a spirit of Jezebel. And why is this? This is because she is teaching people in an indirect way to commit fornication by the means of torture and abuse. In other words, when people go to see this movie that is trash, they will think that it's okay to do it. And it's not. I will tell you. I will tell you if all of you include a, if if there's anyone okay let me tell you something if there's so there are if there are so-called Christians that think they can go see this movie you're seriously mistaken because a bible believing born again Christian in their right mind should never see and be and be a part of these kind of films this is a an example of a movie that you should never see because if you go see it you're basically partaking in its sin. And you can't serve two masters. The Bible says you cannot serve two masters. You cannot, you cannot sit at the table of the Lord and sit at the table of devils. It's simple. Simple as that. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, yeah, I don't understand. In, in, in our, and in America, we can't preach the word of God in schools. We can't preach the word of God in, in certain places because they will censor that. Oh, but they will allow trash, like the, like the, these trashy films, to be displayed in our theaters, but they will censor the word of God. We've got a serious issue in this nation. And it all starts with the church. Churches, start doing your job. You lazy pastors. Either get out of the way or repent and start getting active and start doing what God tells you to. God is fed up with all the nonsense that a lot of these American churches are doing. God is not happy. The good Lord is very displeased with, his, with the church. The Bible says that Judgment must first begin at the house of God. Amen. Now, Isaiah 5:20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Proverbs 17:5. He that justify the wicked, and he that condemneth the just, even they both are an abomination to the Lord. It is very wrong to be watching filthy movies like Fifty Shades of Grey and all these other nonsense movies that promote sin like this. Um, the movie is a movie that comes straight out from the pit of hell. And no Bible-believing Christian should ever have part in that. Amen? Um, 
Like I said, the movie promotes adultery, fornication, torture, relationship abuse, and please forgive me for the usage of the word sex, but satanic sex is what it promotes. Now, towards the beginning, I had mentioned on how this movie came out on Friday the 13th. Now, if that may seem suspicious, and, and, and I'm not that kind of person to be suspicious, like, to have suspicions, like, you know, to be, you know, wild-eyed crazy. But the thing is, Friday the 13th is a, you know, a lot of times when you have Friday the 13th, it's usually a high satanic day. It's a satanic high day. So for a movie like this to be coming out on a high satanic day doesn't surprise me. Okay? And Satan will use this to brainwash the maths, masses. And if you don't believe in brainwashing, you go take a look at what they're doing in the news. In, a, in the news outlets, the news media. They're brainwashing. And how are they doing that? They're not... They're not telling the news as it is they have their own agenda they have a globalist agenda remember that now for those Christians that I'm going to kind of wrap it up here because we're nearing the end um, if you so called Christians think it's alright to go see this film you're you're not thinking Bible. Okay? People. Okay? Those who claim to be Christians, you need to repent. I think it's shameful that you people who claim to be Christian think it's okay to go see trash like this. It's not okay. It is wrong. And how do you think God feels about that? How do you think God feels about films like this coming out? Not Probably not very happy. Okay. Um, we, uh, you, you people who claim to be Christian who went to goes to goes and goes off and sees movies like this, I think you need to repent of your sin. Repent for repent. That's all I have to say is repent. Repent and turn away from such adulterous, fornicating films like this. And all you non-believers, listen, whether if you claim to be Christian, if you're born again, or if you're not saved, I love you all. Okay, I do. If I didn't love you all, I wouldn't be preaching stuff like this. But let me tell you something. Non-believers, today's the day of salvation. You need to repent. Repentance unto salvation. Okay? Okay? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow might be too late. After this broadcast is done, it will probably, it might be too late. We don't know. It might be too late. We don't know when we're going home. Um, you know, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is who he says he is, and came and did what he said he was going to come and do. If you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you'll be saved. Amen? Now listen. Um, I love you all. I didn't mean to get... I, the thing is, it was a very graphic message. I understand that. But it needs to be exposed. Because I don't think a whole lot of pastors have wanting are wanting to have a backbone to exposing trash like this. But it needs to be exposed. Because if you don't expose it, you're just as guilty as those who made the film. I'm not perfect. I have my, I have my shortcomings. I fall short. Okay? Just like you, I, I'm a dirty, rotten sinner saved by grace through faith. Okay? I'm not any more perfect than anyone else. Believer and non-believer need to re the believers need to repent for forgiveness of sins. Non-believers should repent on the salvation 
And when you become believers, you still need to repent for forgiveness of sin. Can I get an amen on that? And I'm going to tell you something. I might seem, I might seem like I am too in your face and too hard to hear. But you know what? The Word of God commands me to preach it as it is. Now, I'm going to prove that to you. Now, if you've got your Bibles, I'm going to close with this here, okay? Turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 3. And I'm going to tell you why I have to preach hard stuff at times. Okay? Again, uh, Ezekiel chapter 3, and let's, we're going to start in verse 17. It says, Son of man, I've made thee a watchman under the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth, and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die, because thou hast not given him warning, he shall die in his sin, and his righteous and his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man, that the righteous man sin not, and he doeth not sin, he shall surely live because he is warned and thou hast delivered thy soul you see in the bible that god takes that very seriously being a watchman is not a pastor is not just a watchman but it's every single born again christian every single bible by a uh, born again king james believer god fearing person if you're born again god fearing and you believe the Bible. God has called you to being a watchman. A watchman is a calling for all believers, not just a select few. That means you have an obligation to warn. If you fail to warn, their blood will be at your hands. Amen? Anyways, so that's the message that I have today. You know, I, I hate to, I, I don't want to be anyone's enemy. I want to be friends with everybody. I, I don't want to hate people. I want to love people. I don't want to be your enemy. I want to be your friend. Praise the, I want to be, you know, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Let's be friends. But there are times that I have to preach things that are hard. And... There are things that people may not want to hear, but they're going to have to hear it anyways. And I'm going to tell you something. If you don't like what I said, take it up with God and tell God you didn't like it. Okay? If I'm wrong, God will chastise me for it. But if I'm right, I ask and pray that he'll show you what I'm talking about. There's no excuse for laziness and there's no excuse for... There's no excuse for laziness and there's no excuse for ignorance. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Lest Satan get an advantage of us for we are not ignorant of his devices. Amen. So anyways, I know this has been a very hard message to hear. But the thing is, it ties in with everything. And I'm going to tell you something. With what I just read, with all this satanic stuff that's... All these satanic movies that are coming out. With all these foreign... With, Adultery and fornication. The spirit behind it is in fact Jezebel. It's Astaroth. It's Shekinah. That is the spirit that's behind it. Amen. So with that said, uh, yeah, I love you guys. And I appreciate those who tuned in and will be tuning in in future broadcasts. We, we, we love you. Uh, but uh, anyways, till, uh, till next time, this is Pastor Brandon signing off. Uh, I love you. God bless you. We pray, I pray, praise the Lord for those who've watched. And um, till next time, remember, 
Think Bible. You guys have a, good, a great and fantastic uh, Saturday. Have a good weekend. And we'll see you next time. God bless.